Okay, so for question three, we're looking to simplify again, but this time we're mostly focusing on the power rules or the exponent rules. So how to simplify or combine things that have powers. This first problem, we're looking at timesing the powers. That's 8m to the 3 times 2m to the 4. So when you times powers, or I should say when you're timesing terms with powers, so when we're timesing terms, you add the power for the same base and then you times the number. And this is going to be our coefficient or the number if you want in front. Okay. So in this case, 8 is a coefficient and 2 is also a coefficient. Those are the numbers in front. So we treat those just like we've always treated numbers. What would be 8 times 2? Well that would be 16. Now the next part is going to be the powers and here we're going to add the powers. So I'm doing that because I notice these are both on an m so they've got the same base and so I can do m to the 3 times m to the 4 becomes m. What's 3 plus 4? Equals 7. So it becomes m to the 7. So again how this comes about is I've done 8 times 2 to get me the 16 in front because those are the coefficients I times like normal. And then the powers, 3 and 4, are going to add together to give me a, co a power there of 7 on the m. Taking a look at a second example with the same situation, same rules, I'm going to again add the powers and times the coefficients. Um, well, I'll put the numbers in front because that's how we usually refer to them, times the numbers in front. Okay, so timesing the numbers in front to start with, we see minus 9 and 3, so negative 9 times 3 is going to get you negative 27. And now I need to add powers, but it's only for the bases that are the same. So let's look at the a's. I have 3 a's, and 4 a's, so 3 plus 4 gives me 7a. And for the b's, I've got a b here and b to the power of 5. And what's the invisible number here? If you see a letter with no number at the front as a power, at the back as a power, don't forget there'll be a little invisible 1. So that's b to the 1 and b to the 5. If I add 5 plus 1, I get 6. So there's my answer for combining those terms. Taking a look at another example, here we see brackets. So when you've got brackets with powers, we need to remind ourselves that it's going to be um, taking that power out the back and timesing it onto all the other powers. So in this case we actually times the powers. And one way to think about that is that we need to take this power of squared and times it onto everything inside of here, including the 5. But it's interesting because we have to put think about it as putting the power on the number in front. So here I'm going to go 5 squared because this whole thing is being squared so I need to have 5 squared. And a, well if we need to times the power onto something there, what's the invisible power there will be a 1. So 2 times 1 will get you 2, that becomes a squared. And the b, that's b, four, b to the power of 4 squared, so that's b to the power of 4 times 2 there, so that becomes 8. So my answer here would be 25, because 5 squared becomes 25, a to the power of 2, and b to the power of 8. Now just so that you see an alternate way to solve this problem, remembering that x squared is equal to x times x, that it becomes two lots of that. So this idea here of 5ab to the 4 squared, we could actually rewrite that as 5ab to the 4 times 5ab to the 4. And like we just did in the previous problem, you can think about timesing the numbers in front together. That gets you 25 and then adding the powers, recognizing that there's an invisible 1 on both those a's, so 1 plus 1 becomes 2, we get a to the power 2, and adding the power on the b's, 4 plus 4 becomes 8. 
So two ways to do that problem. One using the rule of brackets where you times the powers together, or the second way to rewrite it, put it out the two different or the two brackets, write them out side by side, and times them together using the timesing rules. In this problem, we're looking at square roots. So we have to remember with roots, what you want to do is take the square root of the number, or the coefficient, and I want you to divide the power in two, take half the power. So that's what happens when we take a square root of a power. So if we look at this, what is the square root of 81? Taking that number in front, what is the square root of 81? That is 9. And then what I want to do is half the power. So this m to the 20, half of 20 becomes 10. And that's my answer. So again, take the square root of the number in front, and then divide the power by 2. Now we're looking at dealing with fractions or division. So when we're dividing terms, what we're going to do here is for the same base, we actually subtract the powers. So if we divide 7a by 3a, we're going to subtract the power there. Same base, both a's, we're going to take 7 minus 3, and that's going to become a to the 4. And there's a few ways to visualize this. Remember that dividing is the same as having a fraction. So we could say a over 7 over a to the 3. Sorry, a to the 7 over a to the 3. This is just an alternate way to look at it. And when you see it this way, you can recognize it's a fraction, but we're still going to do the same rule of subtracting the powers. So if you do 7 minus 3, you get 4, a to the 4, same thing. And one last way to look at this problem is, like we just discussed, x to the power of 2 is equal to 2 x's. Well, a to the power of 7 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 a's over 3 a's, 1, 2, 3, a to the power of 3. And if you write it out like that, one thing that you can do is actually cross the math one for one. So one of the a's on bottom will cancel one of the a's on top, another one will cancel, and another one will cancel. So how many are left? And in this case, we've got four a's, so we write it as a to the four. So three ways to visualize that problem, but remember when you're dividing powers, dividing terms of powers, we subtract the numbers, or subtract the powers. One more example like that. Here we've got it written out in fraction form. We recognize that it's y to the eight and y to the five, the same base. So we will, in fact, subtract those powers. And eight minus 5 is equal to 3. Looking at another example, here we've actually got coefficients, or those numbers in front. So when you're dividing terms, like we just said, you can subtract the powers, but what we do to the numbers in front is treat them like a fraction. So we need to simplify. So I'll just write it here. 16 over 4, that's the same as saying 16 divided by 4. So that's what I mean by treat it as a fraction. 16 divided by 4 is what? It is, in fact, 4. And then we can think now about just the y6 over y, looking at just the terms of the power here. So y to the 6 divided by y Remember, there'll be an invisible one there, so we subtract those powers. That becomes y to the 5. So here, we treat the numbers just like a fraction and treat them like normal. 16 divided by 4 gives me 4. And then we look at the terms with the powers there and subtract the powers. Last example on this one. Again, same rules apply. So we look at the numbers in front first. 2 over 8. Well, how does that simplify? You could put it into your calculator, but here we're looking for a common factor that we can take out in a sense. So 2 over 8 can be written as 2 times 1 over 2 times 4, because 2 times 4 gives me 8, and 2 times 1 will give me 2. And if you write it out this way, you can see that they both have a 2 inside of them. So we can, in fact, cancel a 2 from the top and the bottom, and we're left with 1 over 4. And now we can look at the x and the y. 
oops, that's not very helpful, <laughs> um, x to the 5 and y to the 2, we would not subtract the powers here because, in fact, these are different bases. x and y are not the same, so we leave the powers on those exactly the same.